we're going to be tying up a fly pattern that you won't want to be without if you happen to run into this hatch. To start, we'll use a makeshift tube vise and grab some yellow foam. Cut out a small section and carefully push your pin through the middle of it. With this complete, we'll grab some white thread and use this to secure the foam tightly to the pin. Snap your excess free and grab some olive elk hair. We'll select a small clump and secure it to the top of our foam. To help position it, we'll take an additional two wraps around it before securing it in place. Ensure that you secure tightly with your thread. Pull everything backwards, beginning to wrap your thread backwards in open spirals, ensuring that the elk hair stays at the top of the foam and continue to do so until we reach the tip, at which point we'll secure tightly and continue back towards the head of the pin. Once again in open spirals, wrapping in between our previous wraps. With this complete, we'll secure everything tightly in place and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and this will be the extended body. Carefully pull everything free, removing your pin and replacing it with a hook. I like to use an emerger style hook, generally in a size 10. We'll swap over to a pale yellow thread Continue wrapping, laying down a thread base, and returning your thread to the head of the fly. At which point, we'll grab some pale yellow dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend, create a dubbing noodle, and begin to wrap this over the top of our thread base. Creating a small buildup of thread at the back of the fly. We'll use this to help prop up our extended body, placing it on top of our hook shank and securing it tightly in place. With this complete, we'll grab some more dubbing, create another dubbing noodle, and wrap this just in front of our extended body. Once again, creating a small buildup of dubbing for our next step. And brush it out slightly to help blend it into the body. Next, we'll grab some CDC feathers, here I'm using the color sulfur, securing it tightly to the top of the hook shank. I also like to take a single thread wrap behind it to help prop the feather upwards. Once secure, snip your excess free and add some more dubbing just in front of our CDC feather. We'll then grab some crystal flash, here I'm using an olive color, select four fibers and secure them just off to the side of your fly. Fold the other side over and secure it to the other side. With this complete, we'll snip everything to length, trim it up a bit and add another CDC feather. This time, we'll have it be a bit longer than the previous one. Secure it tightly to your hook shank and grab a single strand of a saddle hackle. Here I'm using a yellow. Strip some excess fibers free and secure it to the side of your hook shank. Snip your excess free and grab some olive legs. Fold over a single strand and secure them to either side of your fly. Take a single thread wrap to help hold it in place while you position your legs. Once happy, secure it tightly in place and snip everything to length. Next, we'll grab some wood duck or dyed mallard flanks, pulling the fibers backwards and stripping the excess free. This should leave you with two tips that look something like this. We'll start by securing the flank to one side of the fly at a 45 degree angle and then doing the same to the other side and securing them both tightly in place. To help prop them upwards, we can also take a few thread wraps behind them and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle and use this to wrap it in behind our mallard flank to continue to help to prop it upwards. With this complete, we'll continue dubbing the body until we reach the hook eye. Next, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to hackle it forward first behind the mallard flank, between it, and then continue hackling until you reach the head of the fly. Secure with your thread, and this is my favorite eastern green drake pattern. Some of my more memorable fishing experiences has been using this exact pattern. Although you have to time the hatches perfectly, if you end up finding the green drakes hatching, you won't want to be without it. So I'd highly suggest keeping some in your fly box from the end of June until about the third week of July, depending on your elevation. And I hope that some of you get to experience that this year. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.